This lesson is for section 7.7. .7. Today we're going to be working with quotients of rational expressions. So a quotient means that you're trying to divide rational expressions. Um, so that's our main objective. However, so divide rational expressions. However, really what this should say is multiply rational expressions. It's really a continuation of what we've been working with yesterday with some a little bit more difficult problems in it. But to um, kind of demonstrate why you're really just multiplying expressions, I want you to consider how to divide 1 fourth by 2 thirds. Now we know that if we didn't have a calculator here, we would just take the reciprocal of uh, 2 thirds, so 3 halves, and we'd multiply 1 fourth by 3 halves, so we would get 3 eighths. So this is, again, exactly like what we were doing yesterday. So for our first example, when I have the uh, first expression, rational expression here, divided by this second rational expression, I am just going to turn this right away into a multiplication problem. So I want to find the product now of 4x plus 12 over 6x squared plus 12x. So I will right away um, make this the reciprocal and turn that into a multiplication problem. So now I just factor this like normal. I'm going to take out a 3. So I have x plus 2 in the numerator of the left-hand rational expression. In the denominator, I see a difference of squares. So that'll factor into x plus 3 and x minus 3. Then I have a 4 here, which I can factor out, leaving me with x plus 3. And in the denominator here, I have a 6x as the GCF. So I'll be left with x plus 2. OK, now if I cancel out the factors right away, this is going to leave me with 3 times 4 in the numerator over 6x times x minus 3 in the denominator. OK, so if I want to simplify, I can call that 12 if I wanted to. I could also have just simplified it right away. But a lot of times students will leave this blank. They won't, or leave this un, unfinished, unsimplified. They will not recognize that this is simply 12 over 6x. They think they can't um, cancel anything out here. Um, remember, this is like exponent rules here. This would simplify to 2 over x. So that's exactly what we want to do here. We're going to call that 2 over x times x minus 3. For some reason, there's kind of like a mental block there. Students will not simplify that, and it ends up being similar to something on a test even. Um, so hopefully you can avoid that mistake, OK? OK, let's move on now to number 2. So in number 2, we want to change this right away into a uh, multiplication problem. So we're going to multiply here by the reciprocal. So as soon as you get comfortable with um, changing it into the reciprocal, which I don't expect you to find it tough, but you can probably start to factor right away in your first step. So I'm not going to do that right away. I'll just show you to multiply by the reciprocal first, and then we'll start factoring. So here in the left side numerator, I'm going to factor out a GCF, which is 3. So I'm left with s squared minus 2s. Uh, minus 15 over s plus 4, the quantity squared, times another s plus 4 in the numerator over here, over s minus 5, that quantity squared. So this factors, this is a perfect square, factors into s minus 5, the quantity squared. And now I'll just continue to factor. Um, right away, though, since I have this s plus 4 um, squared and this s plus 4, I'm going to at least cancel one of those here. So now I have just s plus 4 in the denominator. And then if I factor in the numerator, I have 3 times s minus 5 times s plus uh, 3. So over s plus 4. And over here, I have 1 over s minus 5, the quantity squared. All right, now I see another time where I can take out at least one of those s minus 5s. So now I have s minus 5 in the denominator. My final answer here um, would be 3 times s plus 3 over s plus 4 times s minus 5. That's as far as this factored expression um, can go. OK, so here right away in number 3, we see some difficult um, fraction work here. Um, I've got this quantity, a squared minus 4a plus 4 divided by a squared minus 5a plus 6, all divided by this other fraction here. Now, when you're dividing fractions, again, remember, it's just multiplying by the reciprocal. So if I wanted to write this out longhand, I would take this and show that it's being divided by this guy here. I don't want to rewrite everything because it's going to take up so much space. But basically, that means then I can change this into a multiplication problem. I can rewrite this as this first expression, this first rational expression, multiplied by the reciprocal of this denominator. So I'm going to change that into a minus 3 over a minus 2, the quantity squared. So really, that's the problem that I'm dealing with now. So I'll just ignore this for right now. And then I begin factoring. So I have a minus 2, the quantity squared in the numerator here, 
And in the denominator, this is a minus uh, a plus six. Oh no, that's wrong. Sorry, a minus two and a minus three. because I need the product to be positive six and add up to negative five. And then I have a minus three over a minus two, the quantity squared. All right, right away, this a minus twos. Those will cancel, both of them. Um, and then I have this a minus three, which will cancel with this a minus three, leaving me with one over a minus two. So really what um, we wanted to show you in this problem, it's pretty easy once you actually get it set up correctly, is what to deal with uh, when you see something like this. This is a fraction divided by another fraction. Make sure you just think of that as just multiplying by this particular reciprocal. All right, let's move on to number four. Okay, number four is gonna take up the bulk of the lesson here in terms of time, um, and that's because it's definitely the most complex of the four questions that are on this note sheet. So I'm gonna show you two different ways actually to go about um, trying to find the quotient of this particular expression divided by this expression. So I'm gonna show you two different ways. Now for the first method, um, we wanna change this into a fraction divided by another fraction, because right now these are not, this is not really a fraction. Um, we have a whole number minus another fraction here and a whole number plus a rational expression here. So I wanna turn both of these into fractions. Um, now in the numerator, Let's use the idea that if we try to subtract these, we need to have a common denominator. Now the common denominator between um, x squared and this one over one here would be x squared. So I would have to multiply one by x squared over x squared. So I have x squared over x squared minus one over x squared. So I'm just finding a common denominator, just like if I tried to add three halves plus one fourth. The common denominator here would be four, so I'd have to multiply this by two over two to get six fourths. It's the same thing I'm doing here, except for I'm multiplying by x squared over x squared to get that common denominator of x squared. All right, so anyhow, I end up in the numerator with the expression x squared minus one over x squared. So now I have a fraction, so this is looking a lot better for me. Now in the denominator, I have one plus one over x. The common denominator here would be x. Right, this is one over one plus one over x. So the common denominator here is x, which means that I will multiply one by x over x. So I have x over x plus one over x, and that leaves me with x plus one, whoops, x plus one over x. Okay, so we have the numerator here, and now we have the denominator. We're, we're taking this numerator and we're dividing it by this particular expression in our denominator. So we have x squared, let's, um, I don't wanna erase all the work here, but I think I have to. Okay, so let's just rewrite this here. I have x squared minus one over x squared divided by x plus one over x. Now we know that this is the same as multiplying. This division bar means that you're gonna just multiply by the reciprocal of your denominator here. So we have x squared minus one over x squared multiplied by Oops, where did that division bar go? X over X plus one. So really this is what we're finding the product of now, okay? So here we can take this fraction, uh, this uh, numerator and make that difference of squares X plus one and X minus one. We have X squared in the denominator, X in the numerator here and the X plus one here. So we have factors that will cancel, that X plus one will cancel. We also have an X over X squared. So one of those X's will disappear here we're left with x minus one over x. So that was our first method here, okay? That first method was finding a common denominator for both the fraction and the denominator, and then um, you know writing that after we found it in terms of just one fraction for both of the expressions, we just multiplied by the reciprocal, okay? All right, now I'm gonna erase, and I'm gonna show you method two. So method two, um, right away, instead of trying to find a common denominator for both, what you'll do is you'll take the common denominator for both the fraction uh, in the numerator and the denominator, so that common denominator here would be x squared, and you will multiply by x squared over x squared. So you're gonna multiply both the numerator here by x squared and the denominator here, <laughs> denominator here by x squared because this isn't really changing the problem at all. This value, that's equivalent to one. Okay, so we'll multiply throughout by x squared over x squared. So in my numerator, I'm multiplying and distributing this x squared. So let's write that out in front of this, because I think it's gonna be a little bit easier. So again, we're taking x squared over x squared and we're multiplying by this whole thing. In the numerator, x squared times one, that becomes x squared. x squared times 
negative, so let's do this work down here, x squared times a negative 1 over x squared. Well, these x squareds will cancel, and I'm left with just minus 1. So that takes care of my numerator now. See, now I no longer have a fraction, so that's kind of nice. In the denominator, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to multiply here by that x squared. x squared times 1, that gives me x squared. And then x squared times 1 over x, so x squared times 1 over x, the x here will cancel out, and I'm left with just an x. So I have x squared plus x in the denominator. Now I just factor this uh, like normal, so I have x plus 1 times x minus 1. If I factor out the x here, the GCF, I'm left with x plus 1. These will cancel, and I'm left with the exact same expression I had when I used my first method, x minus 1 over x. All right. Now it's really up to you, whichever one you feel more comfortable with. But that's the idea when you're multiplying, uh, or when you have complex fractions here. You either want to get a common denominator and turn this into just one big fraction, turn this into one big fraction, and then you, you find um, the, you know, the quotient by multiplying by the reciprocal, or like method two here, you can find the common denominator for both the numerator and the denominator. In this case, it would be x squared. And you multiply by x squared over x squared, so that x squared gets distributed to the numerator, and this x squared gets distributed to the denominator. It simplifies, and you just continue to simplify using our normal methods. Okay, I know that one's kind of a confusing one. You'll definitely see more examples of that tomorrow. Um, we'll probably have something similar to that in a quiz check or in a... Um, uh, in class homework assignment. So um, get ready for it. So nice job. I'll see you guys in class tomorrow.